and uh, either have a passion and a gift for worship or whether maybe be an instrument that you play and you would like to be a, a part to contribute in our worship time, uh, please come and see me and uh, we would like to make that, uh, make that happen because the more that we have involved, then the better we can do a, a rotation folks can get to, uh, you know, take a break and make a schedule and different people sing at different times and so on. So if the Lord is impressed on your heart and you are here, uh, please don't hesitate to, to come and see myself. I also would like to do something similar to a, a choir. Um, I have some, some songs that are really uh, impressed, on, impressed on my heart, very powerful, wonderful songs. and. It's great for the worship team to sing them, but I believe it would be even better to have a few extra voices. And um, we'll just put a, a nice collection of songs together, and maybe we can just have a, a night of praise and worship, a, a mini concert of some sort. So if that's you, um, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, Aliyah, you're gonna come? You guys sing? Oh, okay, I thought you were volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I just want to say uh, a special, wonderful, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, whether you used to be a mother and you are no longer a mother, uh, to all the current mothers, and also to the mothers to be, I want to say a special happy Mother's Day to you and I. Uh, Pray that you would uh, have a blessed day and uh, that you would just sense the love from your children and those whom you may be adopted as children because there can be biological mothers, but some of, the, some of you maybe are a spiritual mother. You have adopted someone on your wings, whether it be a son or a daughter, and uh, you have become a spiritual mother to that boy or to that girl or so on. So even for the spiritual mothers, just want to say as well, Happy Mother's Day to you because we need the biological mothers, but we also need the spiritual mothers, the mothers of Zion. Amen? Before I, I minister, I just want to call our dear sister Eleanor. She has a word that she, um, the Lord has impressed on her heart. And she's just going to come and, and share that with us. Uh, today before uh, before I minister. So, amen. This is a prayer warrior. Um, I consider her an intercessor. In her very quietness and in her quiet space, she's one that presses into the Lord. So come along, my dear sister, and share.
afternoon, I wasn't quite sure what the Lord would have me to, to minister. And so the Lord said, um, to hold off on ministering the word that I have prepared. And so I want to take this time instead to just really honor the mothers in our midst. And so I believe the word that the Lord has impressed on my heart. For whatever reason, he would want me to minister next week. That's what I would do. And uh, if you can make it, please make it. I try not to be a pastor that preaches on events. Because, not because it's Mother's Day means the message needs to be on mothers. Not because it's Father's Day, the message needs to be on fathers. Not because it's Thanksgiving, the message needs to be on Thanksgiving. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And so what the Lord might be directing at that specific time may not necessarily be the event that we are celebrating. However, though, I do want to take this brief time and just honor the mothers here. And I promise you, it's Mother's Day. I will not be long-winded. I will not be long. Some of you have plans. Okay, I hear a little chuckle there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Some of you have plans to go out with your families. And I know there are many that have plans, and that's why they're not here today because they've uh, taken a special time to meet with families and, and friends and so on, and so we bless them. So I want to share with you a word of encouragement from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and I'm assuming most of you will already have known what that scripture speaks concerning. It speaks about Proverbs, chapter 31, and I am going to read from verse 10 of Proverbs 31. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Proverbs 31, verse 10. woman or wife, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. Verse 16. She considers the field and buys it. From her profits, she plants the vineyard. She grinds. She girds herself part of with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the vista and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is filled with scarlet. She makes tapestry, tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. Wow! Strength and honor are her clothing. Whew. She shall rejoice in time to come. She 
opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the special day that as a society we have set apart, set aside to honor, recognize, and celebrate mothers. Not just those who have birthed a child, but those who have taken the time to become a mother to someone else, a spiritual mother. Thank you for all the mothers today mothers even to be. Thank you for your presence in our midst, O oh Lord, as we come Sunday after Sunday to bless you and to be blessed by you. Now, Father, I decrease and ask that you increase in me. Let me minister your word, spring for you, in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and do not permit me to say anything more or less than what you would have me to speak. I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. God say, Amen. Who can find a virtuous wife or woman? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. As we read the book of Proverbs 31, where it, has, it speaks about the virtuous woman, we are reminded that women of old weren't necessarily women that just stayed home and did nothing because it seemed like there are some that want to project that that was the life of a woman. When we look at this woman, we can see that she is very industrious. She is very creative. She's an entrepreneur. She is not idle. She is not lazy. She is considered a virtuous woman. She is a business woman. She takes care of her family, of her children, of her husband. And she does many things, and she is recognized in so many ways. And in verse 31, it says, Give her of the fruit, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, I want to say something, because we live in a time where there seems to be this competition going on between men and women, what men are capable of doing and what women are capable of doing. And there is a movement out there that we can call the feminist movement. 
because they are wired differently. Even children know that their mamas are wired differently. When a child is hurt, oftentimes, 99.9% of the time, who do they run to? They run to mommy because mommy has a unique nurturing part of her being, of her existence, the way God created her. Now, I'm not saying the guys can't try to be like that, but they cannot truly fulfill that role that the mom can fulfill. And so here is the challenge. If the woman is challenging the man that I can be like you, and I can do everything that you can do, if you step into the role of the man, then who fulfills the role of the woman? It's a feminist movement, and it's really of the devil. Because God created women to be unique in their role and their position of a woman. So women, hold the fort. Hold the line. Hold your line. Stop, and I'm not saying this among any of us here today and the ladies here, but stop trying to compete. Stop trying to prove to men that you can do what they can do and even better. Stop trying to prove you were created for that. And, and I pray there, I pray there aren't men out there wanting to be taking the role of woman. Well, they, they are. You know, there's men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men. But I'm, I'm speaking to the major feminist movement that's out there. God wants you to stay in your lane. Men, God wants you to stay in your lane. We compliment the woman, the woman compliment the men. Together we become a team. We are not supposed to be in competition among each other. Amen? Men fulfill the role of a man that you are called to fulfill. Women fulfill the role of the woman that you were called to fulfill. Don't try to be like anyone else. When you try to be like someone else, you are not your real self. If you try to be like someone else, then where, where are you? Where is your real, genuine self? You know, there's a guy in Jamaica, a singer, and they call him Ghost. <laughs> I remember growing up, and remember I said I wanted to be an R&B singer. So there were my two um, inspiration of singing back in Jamaica, one by the name of Sanchez. I love that guy to this day. I love the way he sings. And there's another one by the name of Ghost. And so I used to try to imitate ghosts and sing like ghosts. And when you hear the guy sings, it's a unique kind of voice. And I felt at one point in time, the Lord said to me, Ray, what are you doing? I believe to this very day, I ruined my genuine voice by trying to be like him. To this day, I believe that I ruined my natural voice and what my voice was capable of doing because I was simply trying to sing and duplicate and replicate and imitate and all the things. This guy. And it's what the Lord said, stop. Be yourself. Because if I imitate him, who am I? Where is the real me? Where is my genuine voice? This feminist movement is no doubt of the devil. Go with me quickly to the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Genesis. 
Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, of the fruit of the tree of which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows, hmm, look at the deception, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. And the rest is all known and good. You will be like God. Now when we read a few more verses and so on, the Bible says the woman saw that the food was pleasant to the eye and desired to make one wise and so on as she took me. But may I submit to you that I believe one of her main motivation in disobeying God is the thought or the idea that she could be like God.
But God has designed men to be that person to take on that responsibility. Now it's great when both are working and they can shoulder the burden together. And if so be, if the husband is bringing home lots and the wife can stay at home and take care of the home and children, then so be it. The decision is such and everyone makes their own decision. But we're having this movement now, and you know what? It's a movement, this feminist movement, it has to do with rebellion as well. Because women now, they're feeling like, okay, I'm earning my own six-figure income or whatever, and I don't need your money. <laughs> and they're promoting their independence, and with that comes a lack of submission. With that comes a lack of submission. Now I want you to, I don't want you to take what I'm saying out of context. There is a healthy way of relationship and, and camaraderie between the husband and the wife. But I can tell you that one of the move, the main idea behind this feminist movement is the idea of independence, where I don't need you. I can carry my, I can carry my own weight. I don't need you. And with the same thought of I don't need you comes I don't need to submit to you. Be the virtuous woman. Be the virtuous mother. Be the virtuous wife. And I'm going to share this last scripture and then I'm going to I believe it's found in 1 Peter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Prayer 
and that it is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Now, I don't know, woman, when you read the scripture, how you feel, how you take it on, but it's not to be viewed in a very negative way. Don't let the enemy deceive you at all. But it says, husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. Woman, you can never be a man because you're not wired to be like a man. But in the same token, men, you can never be a woman. You were never wired to be a woman. Dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as being joint heirs together. You know, sometimes, you know, like one of the things that Ladies sometimes folk to say they're very emotional. Some are more emo emotional than others. Well, why? It's a part of your makeup. And with that emotion come the ability to be very nurturing. You know, my son had a little uh, mini surgery and uh, <laughs> needed uh, a little dressing, so to speak. And my wife was like, uh, Ray, you need to go dress your son. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> not that I can and stuff, I'm like, you do it, man. That's, you're good at that. You're gifted at that. <laughs> you're, you're gifted at that. No, but she just have a, 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 a greater ability to endure certain things. If my child, I uh, remember when, you know, a child would throw up. <laughs>
fulfill the role, the design, the purpose for which God has called you and placed you. And believe in woman of God. Don't fall for the trap. Eve, you didn't need to want to be like God. Just be Eve. Woman, you don't need to prove that you can be like a man and do this and do that and so on and so forth. Just be the woman that God called you to be. Independence is good. Sometimes you have to be a survivor. But all that falls under the context of knowing when and how to remain in submission because that is the design, the precept of the Lord. And in that context, you will be blessed beyond measure. Can I ask all the ladies to stand, please? All the ladies, even the little daughter. If you have a daughter, let her stand with you. All the ladies, all the ladies, all the girls, all the girls, all the ladies. All the girls, all the ladies. Amen. I want to pray prayer over you. <coughs> Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you for this day. This season that we have set aside as society to honor, to celebrate, to remember the mothers, the sacrifices that they have made, the who they are to us. They are the channel through which life continues on this earth. And so, Father, for every girl, young girl, for every young woman, for every lady that is standing here today, Father. I lift them before you, and I ask, O oh God, that you find endowment upon them by the power of your Spirit. Father, that they will know and be reminded that their ultimate worth is in you, not in another man, not in themselves, but in you. You are their creator. You are the author and you are the finisher of their faith. Father, I pray that you will guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus right now against every fiery dart of the enemy through society that will try to penetrate their hearts, O oh God, for them to think or act any way that is contrary to your word. Father, help them to walk in the humility, the plan, the design, the purpose for which you have created them. For in doing so, O oh God, they will achieve their greatest fulfillment and purpose on this life for which you have created them. Cover them under the blood of Jesus Christ. The young girls, oh God, I just pray the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that your word, that your spirit will just empower them in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they would be more concerned about their inward beauty more than they are about external beauty that is faded. Lord, that there will be virtuous woman, that the spirit, the ability, the anointing of the virtuous woman would rest upon every woman in this place today. Whether they be a wife or a mom, whether they be on their own, Lord, the spirit of a virtuous woman, like the spirit of Elijah that rested upon Elisha, let the spirit of the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31 may it rest upon every single female in this place today, Father. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your blessings. Shelter them under the shadow of your wings. Lord, you said you will pour out your spirit on all flesh, on men and women alike. Hallelujah. On man and woman alike, 
you would cause them to see dreams and see visions. So pour out your spirit, mighty God, upon them. When the Baraks fail to stand and fulfill their roles, may they rise up, O oh God, and be the Deborahs. May they be the Esthers, the virtuous woman and the wife. Let their work speak for them. May they be called blessed. Children rise up and call them blessed. And their husbands call them blessed. Father, I thank you and I commend them to you right now. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God's people say, Amen. Happy.